this nice combat footage fits in well with the series covering the unit, which would eventually become the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. Following an original war diary, we are embedded with the unit up through the winter of 1941-42, where it was the lead element of Operation Typhoon, the attack on Moscow. In part 5 of the series, in addition to using this sensational war diary, I'll add footage from this late 1941 German training film. There's a longer clip at the end of this video, so stick around. I'll add original situational maps, and introduce an associated entry from the war diary of the German High Command. If you like this kind of material, please remember to subscribe to the channel. In part 4 of this series, Kurt organized the bringing forward of desperately needed supplies through a hail of Soviet artillery fire. Now with the munitions necessary to assault Hill 215, his entry for July 10th continues. At 1800 hours, and without any preparatory artillery fire, the battalion begins the attack. After advancing a good way up the incline, the Russians start in again with heavy artillery fire. This in combination with the well-focused small arms fire from the enemy's multiple prepared defensive positions brings our advance to a halt. At this key moment, Oberscharführer, or technical sergeant, Plauensteiner from the 5th Company sees dug in Russians on his platoon's flank and orders an immediate direct frontal attack. We suddenly receive heavy flanking fire from light machine guns and I am able to make out an MG nest on the hill in the edge of a forested area. I quickly gather three men from the company and we head off in their direction, using obstacles in the terrain for cover. We manage to move in close and after throwing two hand grenades, and firing off a salvo from my MP40, the Soviet nest is silenced. With the way clear, our formation storms the enemy trenches, and the enemy, having taken heavy casualties, retreats in disarray. Late afternoon turns to night, and it gets dark. The individual companies are divided up for guard duty and a unit of pioneers sets to work demining the road, which cuts through the territory and then putting it back in usable condition. A truck from the 8th Company that was bringing up munitions to the front, passing by a forested area, hits a mine, but somehow the munition cargo doesn't explode. None of the three passengers are injured, escaping the incident with nothing more than a scare. It turns out to be part of a large Soviet minefield, which we somehow miraculously avoided. This is a good place for me to thank my Patreon supporters, who make buying these originals possible. Supporters get access to exclusive footage on my website, military1945.com. Open a free account there and see an example clip. This is the original campaign atlas produced by the German High Command for Operation Barbarossa. In part three, we saw how a Soviet armored counterattack on July 6th led to the dividing up of the SS Division Reich in order to protect the 10th Panzer Division's left flank. On the 7th, an enemy parachute drop behind German lines showed that the thrust was more than diversionary, intending to spring Soviet troops that were trapped in the Bielestock Minsk pocket. By July 8th, the Soviet armored attack had been contained and the airborne troops neutralized. 
This is an entry in the German High Command official war diary for July 9th. Die zweite und neunte Armee setzen den Vormarsch nach Osten fort. Die Schlacht um Bielestock und westlich Minsk ist siegreich beendet und endgültig abgeschlossen. That gives us an overview of how the SS Division Reich fit into Army Group Center at the time of Kurt's entries. He continues on July 10th. Around midnight, the Russians hit us again with a massive artillery barrage, but this time we're well protected by their defensive position and no noteworthy damage is sustained. At sunset, there isn't a trace of the enemy. It seems that once again, the massive artillery barrage was done to cover their retreat. We're able to continue the advance to the river without coming into contact with the enemy. In part six, we'll cover the unit's crossing of the Dnieper River. So remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications. Now here's more of that attacking infantry training film. Thanks for watching. Durch Leuchtzeichen wird Artillerieunterstützung angefordert. Schwere Granatwerfer und leichte Infanteriegeschütze greifen in den Kampf ein. machen gewehrweise Stellungswechsel. VW gibt die Schießgrundlagen an die Artillerie zurück. Motorisierte 15 cm Batterie wird geschützweise vorgezogen. Zuerst feuerbereite, leichte Artillerie kämpfen erkannte Feindziele nieder. Feuer! Unter dem zusammengefassten Feuer der schweren Infanteriewaffen und Artillerie wird der Widerstand gebrochen. Der Wald wird durchstoßen. Artillerie legt das Feuer vor. und der Artillerie gegen die Ortschaft vergossen, die im Sturm genommen werden. 